Hello Year 7, welcome back to your music lessons. This is your fourth music lesson, this one being on African djembe and dynamics. Before we get started, any lessons that you're trying to find, any previous lessons can be found on YouTube. I put a link to all the music lessons to a playlist on uh, this PowerPoint here. So you can see it right there and that will help you find this PowerPoint and this video, sorry, and all other videos as well. So that's lessons one, uh, one, two, three, and obviously four. When it comes to uploading a work, please remember Word document, PowerPoint, screenshot, or you can take a picture of your written work and upload it. And then please, as said before, make sure you complete any previous lessons. Uh, understanding from previous lessons is required to complete this lesson effectively. So you need to make sure that you've done previous lessons as well. For today's lesson, the lesson objective is to understand dynamics and timbre so that they can be identified and described. So the very basics I'm expecting you to do today is uh, I'm able to explain the definitions of timbre or dynamics. When you're able to do that in the yellow box, you are able to identify and describe different timbres. And then once you're able to do that as well, then you are able to highlight and describe the dynamics of a song. So timbre, we looked at this last week, but I just want to go into a bit more detail. So timbre, as we know, equals sound. So you, how you describe the sound of something. So I've got three things here that I found around my house. I've got a box of matches, I've got a wine glass, and I've got some pillows. And as you can see for each one, I have given three words to describe those timbres. Let's go through each one. So firstly, shaking a box of matches. So here's my box of matches. I'll, put, I'll uh, shake them for you now. So you can hear there, the box of matches has a, a certain timbre to it. And the three words I've used to describe that timbre is rattle, clicky, and patter. Now, clicky isn't necessarily a word, a proper word, but to describe the timbre of the matches. So you don't need to necessarily use um, grammatically correct words as long as they are really effective in describing the timbre of something but that would be the timbre of the uh, matches a very different timbre could be flicking a wine glass so you can hear i put for the timbre of a wine glass i put soft space and echo so let's have a listen and see if we can hear that kind of timbre in flicking a wine glass So you can hear the wine glass there, yeah, I, I thought it had a very soft space echo kind of sort of timbre to it. Um, very, very different to a box of matches. So you can see how these different timbres have different effects, different sounds uh, to them. Uh, and then lastly, hitting two pillows together. So I've got two pillows here. And if I hit them together, you'll hear it. Those are two pillows hitting together. And again, I've described this as having a dull, dry and loose timbre, very different sounds. And uh, having understanding timbre is really, really effective because um, a lot of music producers will use their understanding of timbre to create songs. So, for example, uh, when you listen to a song, and you hear like a bass drum sound. That's the big round drum that has that sort of low like sound to it. A lot of uh, producers actually use like pillows and hit them together to get that bass sound if they don't have a bass drum at hand they'll just get two pillows hit together and it creates that a similar timbre as a bass drum so it's a really effective way understanding timbre it has a really effective way of creating a song so for task one i would like you to make three sounds with three things in your home so like i've done i've found three things in my home and i've made three sounds with them let's like test making those sounds and once you had to go at making the sounds i'd like you to then describe and write down the timbre of these three things using at least three descriptive words. So like I've done with my three things, I have found it, I've listed what it is, and then I've given three words to describe how it sounds. That's what I'd like you to do and try and find the most interesting timbres you can around your house. Once we have done that, we're moving on to dynamics. So dynamics is just a more complicated way or a musical way of saying volume. So when we say what's the dynamics of something, it's basically just saying what's the volume of something. So here, as you see, the dynamics of a song, you can use various words like loud, quiet.
quiet, or you can even use words in between like quite quiet, quite loud, all these sort of things, a whisper. So you can, so when I, if I ever ask you to describe me the dynamics of something, these are the kind of words you need to think of. It's quite loud, it's quiet, all these things. So for task two, I would like you to listen to these five songs and write down the dynamics of each piece. And I've given you the first one. So the first one is a song called Goliath, and it's by a band called The Mars Volta. And if you listen to the song, the dynamics I've put is loud. All right, you've got four other songs that I need to go listen to and uh, try and think of the dynamics that you would put. What volume would you give it? Would you say it's loud, quiet, or would you say it's something in between for each of those? I've also uh, put the URLs uh, for each of the songs there, so you can take those and you can uh, put them in your uh, in your um, URL bar of your of the your Google, whatever you're looking, whatever or whatever else you're using. Please make sure as well that you write down each artist that you're uh, doing, so it's very clear. So you make sure you write iron wine, and I think the dynamics are blah, blah, blah. so it's very clear, and I can understand that you fully understand what you're doing. So that is your second task. And once you've done both of those tasks, can you please make sure to continue with your djembe research projects? Um, as usual, it can be found on class charts under research projects if you're looking for it. Uh, I'd like to complete slides seven and eight during this lesson. Uh, remember, your deadline is the 12th of February. So you have about two weeks now to finish and submit your project. Two weeks only, so not long now. So please make sure you're slowly adding to it. So this time... You must have you spray done slides one to six. I'm hoping that you do slides seven and eight for the remainder of this lesson. Well done, year seven, and thank you for listening. I hope you're all well.